Hello people, in this video we want to look at the anti-anginal drugs. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, first of all where are we, what are we looking at? Do you know that? We are looking at the chapter anti-anginal and anti-ischemic drugs. Okay, <clears throat> we saw what angina means. We saw the types of angina, stable, classical, variant, prince metal or vasospastic. These are the only two you have to know. Okay, you need not know the other one. At least remember these two. Say stable or classical. It is happening only on exertion. The usual cause is atheroma. The other one is variant or prince metal or vasospastic. Here they, it happens even during rest, even during sleep. This is because of vasospasm. Okay. So the, uh, the reason of angina is either reduced oxygen supply or increased oxygen demand and how we plan to balance this out we plan to reduce the demand or increase the oxygen supply okay so the drugs that are used are nitrates beta blockers calcium channel blockers potassium channel openers and other anti-anginal drugs so you need to know mainly nitrates and calcium channel blockers for your exam they have been asked so many times that every line about it you should know. Okay. Now nitrates basically how they act. See nitrates know they work on blood vessels not on the heart. Okay. So what they do is they work on the blood vessels and they release nitric oxide. Do you know what nitric oxide does? It increases the uh, dilation of the vessel. Right. So the smooth muscles relax. When the smooth muscle relax there will be vasodilation. Mainly this works on the veins. So the, there will be dilation of the veins. As there is dilation of the veins, there will be pooling of blood in the veins and the venous return to the heart will be reduced. So there will be mainly reduction in preload. Are you able to see this? What is, what is written here? So we are looking at nitrates in anti-anginal drugs. So nitrates basically they work on blood vessels, especially veins, they will release nitric oxide, there will be vasodilation, hence there will be pooling of blood in the veins, there will be reduced venous return to the heart and hence there will be less load, preload on the heart will reduce. Some amount of afterload also it can reduce by making arterial dilation. Okay, so the, when the arteries dilate what will happen, there will be less total peripheral resistance and hence there can be after load also can become little less. Mainly it is preload. Did you understand what we said about nitrates? Or everything went over the head. You understood? Nitrates, what do they do? They work on blood vessels, release nitric oxide, there is vasodilation and hence there is reduced load on the heart. Now what are the two types? We have short acting and long acting. You should know glyceryl trinitrate very very important for the exam and isosorbide dinitrate which can be given sublingual it will be short acting if it is given orally it will be long acting okay so these three names can you remember glyceryl trinitrate isosorbide dinitrate i think only two names you have to remember if you want to add a third one you can remember isosorbide mononitrate these three you can remember guys say the three names of nitrates Glyceryl trinitrate, isosorbide dinitrate which can be given sublingually or orally and you have isosorbide mononitrate. Very good. <clears throat> now, let us move on guys. Then you have beta blockers. Guys, we are looking at anti-anginal drugs. If you are lost, uh, we are looking at anti-anginal drugs. Currently, we are moving on to beta blocker. Okay. Now, beta blockers you have already seen in the previous videos, correct? So beta blockers, there are so many types. Let us look at what is important for angina. Hold on, we'll open that. If you remember our uh, uh, video on beta blockers, this is what you would have seen. So here you have non-selective beta blockers and cardio-selective, that is beta 1 blocker. You don't have anything like beta 2 blocker, which is medically important. So you have non-selective beta blockers. In that you can see for angina what they use. This one, labetalol and carvedilol they use for treating angina okay propranolol they can they are saying you can use for treating angina okay anyways you remember labetalol carvi 
lol okay for angina and cardio selectives are the most important ones because these work only on the heart so cardio selective beta blockers you have metoprolol atenolol bisoprolol okay these three you should remember which are the three you should remember metoprolol atenolol and bisoprolol okay so these work for classical angina you can give these what do these actually do beta block they block beta 1 right so when they block beta 1 what happens so you can see that on the heart you have beta 1 beta 1 actually increases heart rate now if beta 1 is blocked then the heart rate will reduce so you will reduce the oxygen demand right so that is how beta blockers work <clears throat> let's move on now so beta blockers we told you propranolol labetalol carvedilol and beta 1 block is the most important you have metoprolol atenolol and bisoprolol okay please don't forget these three metoprolol atenolol and bisoprolol because they are cardio selective they are beta 1 blockers okay so till now we have finished in anti angina we have finished nitrates and beta blockers now we'll move on to what now we'll move on to calcium channel blockers okay now calcium channel blockers are the uh, very important nitrates and calcium channel blockers are the most important exam wise okay <clears throat> now calcium channel blockers they work both on the heart and they work on the blood vessels also they work on both heart and blood vessels now on heart what they do they have negative chronotropic dromotropic and inotropic effect okay so they reduce the heart rate they reduce the conduction and they reduce the contraction of the heart also so they are going to be effective on the heart on the blood vessels what they do they also relax the smooth muscles okay mainly of the arteries so they will reduce the total peripheral resistance and hence the after load of the heart will be reduced understood or everything went above the head they work on calcium channel blockers work on the heart and they also work on the blood vessels so on the heart they have negative chronotropic dromotropic and and inotropic effect what do you mean by chronotropic reduced heart rate <clears throat> dromotropic negative means reduced conduction and negative inotropic means reduced contractility of the heart okay now calcium channel blockers they also work on the smooth muscles of the arteries so they relax the arteries and hence the arteries dilate the total peripheral resistance will reduce and hence the after load on the heart will reduce okay in case you have no idea what these terms mean please look at this chronotropic means heart rate dromotropic conduction inotropic strength of contraction okay now let's move back to calcium channel blockers in calcium channel blockers there are three groups you have phenyl alkyl amine benzothiazepine and dihydropyridines this is nothing but dhp whenever they say dhp it will be a calcium channel blocker so you have phenyl alkyl amine benzothiazepine <clears throat> and dihydropyridines dhp at least remember the drug names verapamil verapamil very very important for exam it is actually used also <clears throat> so verapamil very important diltiazin and amlodipine you have to read you have to know these three names if you want you can remember nifedipine also say these four names please Thank you so much. Now we are going to move on, guys. Potassium channel opener. See, in this case, what is happening? The potassium will leave the cells. Okay, <clears throat> the potassium goes out. So there will be hyperpolarization and there will be relaxation of smooth muscle again. Same effect. So it will reduce after load. So the example is nicorandel. So nicorandel is potassium channel opener. Okay, do you want any extra information on this? We will come to it. Nicorandel is potassium channel opener. Okay, just look at the other anti-anginal drugs. Okay, some of these act on the SA node itself. Okay, and uh, there are other various actions. You can even write statins, antiplatelet drugs, everything in other anti-anginal drugs. Okay, so if you want, you can look at these names. We'll just zoom there for you. Other anti-anginal drugs. Okay. <clears throat> 
So let us wind up this video now. Basically an overview of all the anti-anginal drugs have been given. For exam nitrates and calcium channel blockers very important. So nitrates, uh, glyceryl trinitrate, isosorbide dinitrate, isosorbide mononitrate. Calcium channel blocker, blockers, you should know verapamil, diltiazem, amlodipine, nifedipine. Okay. In the next video, we will cover nitrates complete details and then we'll cover calcium channel blockers complete details. Okay. What else you want to learn from this video? Just uh, two more lines we'll add off. Don't combine beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. Okay. Don't combine these two. And nitrates uh, should not be combined with Viagra. Viagra or sedinafil because uh, Viagra also causes vasodilation and nitrates also cause vasodilation. So there can be <clears throat> excess vasodilation leading to low bl blood pressure. Okay. So it could be fatal. So nitrates should not be combined with Viagra or sedinafil. And beta blockers and calcium blockers should not be combined. Otherwise, a lot of other combinations are actually prescribed for angina. Okay. Bye. See you in the next video.